How are you? How are you doing? What do you mean? Well, uh, do you feel uh, any better than uh, you did, uh, let's say, before the drive-in today? Um, huh? yeah, I feel great with your shake concoctions and. <laughs> I was wondering when this was oh. going to be brought up on the air. I, I don't know what you're into these days. I'm into being healthy. Well, not, there's other people are healthy, but they're not drinking this. Opie, co we, we carpool in mm -hmm. into the city from Long Island. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can relate to having a carpool partner. Oh. Where they have their little routines in the car. <laughs> well, my routine when I drive is driving. Yeah. My routine when I'm the passenger is sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> Opie's routine when he's driving is driving. Which is pretty normal. And when he's a passenger in my vehicle, it's eating. <laughs> he just sits there. For, first, like, time he's eating, it's it's this eggplant parmesan. Well, I like to just watch you squirm. So I'll, what I need to eat lunch oh, on the way please. into work. I can't eat before we get in the car for some reason. Because it's too early for me. I'm on a, a, a strict schedule. And we'll stop for lunch, and I'll I'll get the messiest thing because I know it bothers that the hell out of you. Well, thank you, thank you for doing that. Because the one one thing I hate is a car that stinks mm -hmm. like food mm -hmm. or anything else. So I don't like uh, eating in the in the car mm -hmm. because eventually something's gonna fall, something's gonna gonna take a tumble on the side of the seat. A, big, a piece of chicken or something, and before you know it, it smells like a slaughterhouse. Uh, you still accuse me for the the mustard stain in your old car. I know that was you. It wasn't me. I don't I don't put mustard on my hamburgers. Doesn't matter. There was mustard on the hamburger. You didn't get it without mustard. We how were going did I through get Connecticut? How did I, the, get, how did I get mustard on on the ceiling of your car? I have this all figured out. You and your wife have been blaming me for this for I think three years now. I have this all figured out. <laughs> all right, go. Uh, as I understand it, <laughs> you had ordered a hamburger, and it had mustard on it, because we were in Connecticut. And they like mustard. And they hamburger. put mustard on the hamburgers. Okay. Is this right? Um, yes. At the time, you had a certain hairstyle that you would run your fingers through your hair to keep it in shape from the wind. Is this correct, sir? What are you talking about? Hairstyle? Work, please, uh, my please hair, work with okay, me. Okay, my hair was longer. Your hair was longer. You took your fingers yeah. and ran it through your hair. Okay. Now, I deduct that as you were eating, you m may have gotten some mustard on your hand. Okay. Is this possible, sir? Um, no. I will take the fifth on that. Where's Johnny Cochran when I... I believe, <laughs> I believe it is a possibility... You could have gotten mustard on your hand. All right. As you ran your fingers through your hair, <laughs> some of this mustard was transferred from your hand to your hair. I see. Can this possibly happen, sir? Uh, no, but... I uh, tend to believe that this has happened. All right. As you were getting into the back seat of uh, the car that I, your, uh, my client, or uh, uh, Anthony, was uh, driving at the time, yeah. a Mercury Cougar. Yes. Uh, it's very tight, very tight fit. So you're you're thinking my head rubbed against the, the your ceiling of your car. Your mustard-laden head <laughs> rubbed against the headliner, <laughs> thus depositing mustard on the headliner of the coat. How neurotic are you? I know that's what happened. That's not what happened. It doesn't take Columbo to figure it out. You and Jennifer have been blaming me for that for years. Years. But anyway, so well, it must have been me driving in the back seat and throwing <laughs> mustard on the, the roof of the car. Regardless, that car is gone. Yeah. Now I have the, uh, the new car. Mm -hmm. And you uh, eat in it. Yeah, lunch. Eggplant, Parmesan, whatever the, the messiest special they got going. Uh, did I mention that a coffee cup was found on the floor of the back seat? <laughs> and that was you? <laughs> I don't drink coffee on the way in. Yes, think. you did. At some point, you did. Okay. Because I don't drink coffee. All right. Um, now, this morning, or this afternoon, as we're driving in, Opie goes, uh, Aunt, uh, why don't we stop it? I could stop and get myself my health shake. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever, Op. I'll stop. I'm driving, it's, you know. It's the way I get my veggies. I'm a good guy. So he gets this concoction that's like from a bad sitcom. No, well, now you put the mustard in, and then you put the no, no, no I'll, I'll spinach. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's uh, spinach, <sighs> carrots, mm. and pear. Oh, that just sounds scrumptiddly-ish. And then I put some protein in it.
to make it a protein shake. Ah, how do you get that in there? <laughs> Shut up. Who, who makes it for you? The gag's getting old. Shut up. <laughs> so I drink my stupid, you know. Yeah. Vegetable protein shake. Well, so. that wasn't so much. It was, he comes back to the vehicle with this shot glass, this plastic shot glass with a cover on it, with like the crap that, that, uh, what's her face from The Exorcist spit out? Uh, okay. Linda Blair. Yeah. It was this green, like, liquid. It's my wheatgrass. Wheatgrass. It's the, the hottest rage in the health food industry. Okay. And what does this wheatgrass do for you? It's, you get a lot of uh, concentrated uh, vitamins. Concentrated vitamins. Yes. Yes. You can't so just some of the take vitamins vitamin. you take, uh, they don't dissolve in your system. Oh, is, is that it? Is that what this guy is This is selling? more concentrated. It, it tastes like freshly mowed grass when it goes down with a little sugar in it. Do you answer, like, infomercials and stuff? Do you call up for <laughs> no, things? No, no. Hey, this looks great. <laughs> no, really, they say. I saw it. No. You, you snap it on your wrist, yeah. and, and your wrist pain goes away. But, Anthony, before I could take my shot of wheatgrass, uh, the, the situation had to be perfect. Because I, I promised them I would try drinking it at a stoplight because... God forbid if I, you know, spilled any in in, in his car because it would it would stain. I guess. Well, uh, I guess <laughs> it looked like the green paints you got when you were a kid. You know, in the little capsules, they little colors. Yeah. You have the red. The, it looked just like the green. Right. And I know if that spilt, it would just stain mm -hmm. permanently. That grass stain from concentrated grass goop is not ever coming out. So we're on the LIE. He slows it down to like 55. Set the cruise control so the speed wouldn't fluctuate. At, at a perfect speed. He's making sure he's not hitting any potholes or bumps. And now he's like, okay, open it. After he gave me about 100 tissues to tissues. hold the capsule in. <laughs> I don't want... Well, he, right when he cracks it open, it smelled like a riding lawnmower. <laughs> the whole car just stunk like grass. And then I did my shot. And then he had to open the window because the whole car stunk. All for a lousy shot That's of wheatgrass. I don't need that. So what about your old? What about your old car? The old Blazer you used to have. What about it? Before you traded it in. What about it? That thing was the sour milk mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. You used to drink your coffees or whatever it is. And just throw the. And throw the container in the back. Yeah. Uh, the, I uh, deduct the liquid would ooze out of the coffee container. <laughs> Uh, still containing part of the milk mixture yeah. and hit the carpet and uh, from the sunlight shining through would smell like a baby diaper. That wasn't my fault. Someone spilled milk in my car and I could never find How did they spill milk in your car if they weren't a drinking milk in your car? That's all right. Or I, a milk I allow product. people to eat in my car. And that's why it smelled like milk. Right. For you're, God's sake. You're neurotic. I'm not neurotic. I want a nice car. This is why I'm not married. Is this how it is when married couples get together? No, because I am married, and, and me and my wife know not to uh, eat or drink things in, uh, that can stain or stink a car up in the car. God forbid. God forbid. You don't want the stink mobile. Dude, you're, you're leasing your car, so who cares you get a couple stains on it? But I have to have it for a couple of years. <laughs> I don't want to jump in there and just go, ah, oh, this reeks. <laughs> you be happy with a sour milk mobile. I'm not. Fine. Thank you. You're welcome. I believe I proved my case. I doubt it. But the great mustard caper. There's, there's no <laughs> one listening at this point. They don't care. All right, whatever. All right, it's Two I for care. Tuesday. If you are listening, give us a call. 212-757-1027. Stink fax me. line. We didn't get any faxes yesterday. No. It, it kind of scared us. Is it, a lot of people... Uh, Just set up a buffet in my back seat. Are a lot of people on vacation God this week? Sake. If you're working, Chasing give us a fax. With the canned <laughs> heat on the whatever. <laughs> Shut up. Fax line 212-957-WNEW. The Rock of New York, 1027-WNEW. Two for Tuesday with Soundgarden, Burden in My Hand, and Spoon Man. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey. Everyone is chiming in about uh, myself eating in your car there, Anthony. Well, you shouldn't. Well, this person is sticking up for me. Anthony, why don't you put plastic covers on your leased car, wimpy? <laughs> plastic <laughs> covers on... <sighs> Do you have, like, plastic covers on all your furniture? No. No? Definitely don't. Nope. Remember going to a relative's house? 
houses for like the holidays, and there was always one in the family that had to have the plastic the covers on all plastic the furniture covers, and you could never go into that room that had the plastic covers. There was always the den area, with the paneling and the really lousy couch that was always downstairs. Yeah, you have the green velour couch with the slip covers on it. And then uh, you couldn't go in that room. No. Don't go in there. I had an aunt that enjoyed uh, putting plastic on everything. Yeah. Well, no, I don't put uh, a plastic covers in my car. But if people out there enjoy driving in stinky cars that smell like rotting food, uh, feel free. I, I don't. All right. Well, well, this guy is on your side, Wayne. Uh, dirty cars and dirty smells. When I'm in my car, I am happy to say it is very clean. I don't let anyone eat inside the car. If people see a car that is dirty and smells, of course they would think the driver is the same. That's what I think. Long-time listener, Wayne from uh, Queens. Right. If you get in a friend's car and it's like, yeah, all right, yeah, give me a ride up here or there or whatever, and you hop in, shut the door, and you're like, oh, now i got to smell this for the whole ride, and it's just, oh. It's awful. Now, my car isn't that bad. There's not a lot of rappers, uh, you know, in the car. Yeah. There are some people I drive with. Mm -hmm. You don't. You put your feet into all their empty Burger King wrappers, and it <laughs> comes up to past your ankle. It's like, dude, when, you know, get rid of this. Your legs have to act like the back of the garbage truck. You're just going <laughs> to crunch it down and under the seat. There's just so much crap in the passenger seat. Well, it's not good. The... They're commuting. They eat their burger, and they just keep piling it into the passenger seat. And you know inside the bag is maybe a piece of the burger you didn't want or, you know, fries that dropped out. Yes. I'm definitely not that bad. There's a lady on the phone that wants to discuss my wheatgrass habit. All right. My latest habit where I uh, drink shots of wheatgrass. Wheatgrass. I don't know what that is, but it stinks, too. It smells like grass clippings. It's, uh, it's supposed to help you. A lot of vitamins and nutrients in wheatgrass. Right. So they say. All right, so I bought the myth. <laughs> Hi, NEW. How could you drink that stuff? It's disgusting. Uh, what, the wheatgrass? Yeah, ooh, it tastes like vomit <laughs> and grass and dirt. So you've tried it? Yes. And no one warned me what it tastes like before I drank it. It honestly tastes like uh, freshly mowed grass. It tastes worse than that. Yeah. With the dirt in there also. Now, why did you try it? Because it's supposed to be so good for you. But I almost died after I drank it. Would you rather have a shot of uh, tequila or a shot of wheatgrass? As far as... Yeah, I know. Definitely. It's easier to get tequila down than this wheatgrass shot. Yep, but they, you know what? You have, eat a tomato after you drink the wheatgrass. That's what the guy told me, and it, it really helped. You know something? You know what else he tried to eat my, eat my car once? He ate tuna fish with balsamic vinegar. In your car? On top of the tuna. If you ever want to smell something, <laughs> that's like CS gas. I wouldn't want that like, in my car. It's like nerve gas. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> oh, and it stunk the whole car up even once he left, and he didn't drip any. And it still stunk That's the car. That's worse than wheatgrass, I think. Oh, it was. That had to be the worst. I eat a lot of bizarre stuff. All right. All righty. Bye. Yeah, bye. No, that's not fair, Anthony. Why? First of all, that was horrendous. No, it's a concoction I came up with. All right? You, you got the noodles. Like the elbows. Noodles, like, uh, all right, elbow, elbow. noodles. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's elbow noodles. No, listen. It. It, it, this is really good. Try it at home. Okay, it's, I'm serious. It's <laughs> elbows, can of tuna fish, uh, some shredded cheese. Uh, a little spinach, oh. and lots and lots of balsamic vinegar. You won't believe the smell of this. It's it's like bad old sweat socks. <laughs> I swear to God, it was horrendous. It was awful. I, I should, and then I, I said, I, he opens it up in the car, and I'm like, no way, put the top back on there. No way you're eating that in the car. Mm -hmm. So we get here to the station, and we have a meeting with our boss, and he goes into the, the office, cracks open the top, and starts eating. <laughs> And what happens? Gary goes, ah, oh, what the hell is that? Put that lid back on. He was getting banished out of everywhere he tried. He had to go alone into the locked conference room and eat it. Yeah, that's the truth. Like the boy in the plastic bubble. <laughs> we were watching him through the glass waiting for him to drop. I should whip up a batch and bring it in and have everyone smell it. No, you, will, you will see what will happen. Everybody will just go, oh, my God. It stinks. To it's horrible. High hell. Any W. Any W. Uh, uh, he's listening to the radio. Ah, uh, ah, uh, now he hangs up. Yeah, all right. That was that was a good move, Rick. Great. That was a good <laughs> good screen call there you did for us. That's better. <laughs> That's better. Line three. What does line three have? Hi, Any W. Hello. Hi. What's going on? Not much. All right. 
It's Tuesday, and I was wondering if Opie's become a member of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club yet. You know, we've only been on the radio 45 minutes today. I'm, I'm taking some serious <laughs> shots to the skull. Well, I'm going to try to become a member of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club All once right. again this week. All right, how does I failed, it look? I failed once again last week. What are the odds looking like tonight? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Not good for the Opster, huh? Not too good, no. <laughs> but we we will try. All right. I certainly hope so. Well, this is the reason I came up with the club. Well, you're the, the Pope that... or the Grand Poobah. No, he's I... not. I'm I'm the creator, but I'm not even, you know, the Grand Poobah or anything like that. you got to be in the club to be well, the Poobah. Well, that's true. Like any organization like the Knights of Columbus or the Lions Club, you have to be a member in good standing to, to receive the honors of Grand Poobah. Now, we there under... you go. I understand all that. Trust me, I'm trying. Well, I know it's not easy. I'm married. It's not easy. Did, are you a member of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club? The second week. There you go. Congratulations. Uh, we have to help uh, some people out today, too. Yeah, we can do that. If we're going to help Opie out. We well, tried. He's, a, he's we, a lost cause. We tried. We <laughs> called my girlfriend last week. We found out she doesn't even listen to the radio show. It's just a mess. A complete mess. <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's not well, like she's got to find somebody else. It's not like she's listening right now. You never know. Uh, what did she listen to, Mega? Uh, she well, she said she listened to um, what'd she say? Uh, 103, whatever that stupid station is. They, they play like one, they play one song for 20 straight hours. It's like the same song plays all day. Yeah. She likes that. We're in the middle of a 40-minute music sweep. It's the same song, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> over and over again. So, well, I guess we got to welcome uh, all the Tuesday Night Hummer Club members that have checked into our show today. And eager prospects uh, who tonight will be inducted as members. Yes, and if you need help um, with your lady, you could fax us or email us at this point. Don't mm -hmm. call us with that info, but uh, you could you could fax it over and we'll call some... Uh, some wives and girlfriends today and, and help you out, okay? The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. Two for Tuesday with the Rolling Stones from Goat's Head Soup dancing with Mr. D and Ain't Too Proud to Beg before that. It's Opie and Anthony. You got a nice fax here from Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer writes, Opie and Anthony, last Tuesday I gave my fiance, Lou, a Hummer while he did the dishes. <laughs> oh, my Lord. What wow. the heck is going on? He's now a member of your club. You guys are hysterical. We listen to you guys every day. Keep it up. One guy thinks that uh, Opie shouldn't even be calling other men's women for a Tuesday night Hummer club until he gets one. Come on. How Is many it? people have I personally made happy with this Tuesday night Hummer club? And you're going take, to take the that away from me as well? Hey, guys, I'm trying to help my friend John get into the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. He normally doesn't come out on Tuesdays, but I figure your club is a good way to get him to come out tonight. So if you should read this on the air, the message for John is to meet Angie at the Elm Street Park at the Elm Street Park at 530 on your way home from work. I promise he will be in the club if he meets me there. Mm. John, your Hummer is waiting. Thanks, Angie. Oh, we got to get Angie on the phone. That rocks. <laughs> you know, we've been talking to a lot of people since last week, and it is kind of getting scary how many people are having sex uh, while they listen to our show on Tuesdays. Yeah. Because all you guys want to brag about it. I want to hear from the girls, not the guys, you know? Hey, dude, I got a... You guys were talking about something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's kind of disturbing. It is. <laughs> I, I don't mind hearing from the ladies, but the guys, it's like, all right, keep it to yourself. Yeah. Uh, Wendy writes, hi, I'm enjoying the show. Um, saw you on the web yesterday. A pedophile's dream. Anthony is adorable. <laughs> Our baby pictures are still up, I take it. Yeah, we've been begging to get those off there, but... Uh... <sighs> I don't know. I don't think anyone knows how to work the computer here at NEW yet. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, yesterday we had David Cohen on our show. Yes, we did. And he just, like, he walked through those doors out of nowhere. We, we didn't even know he was coming in. Yeah. I'm wondering who we could get to stop by today. Hmm. If you're, like, a huge celebrity. <laughs> didn't we try to have celebrities call this show? Yeah, but that was uh, early in the game. Yeah, when we first, like, the first week here. Yeah, who was the biggest celebrity we got? Does anyone remember? 
I think it was some... Someone that played like a dead body on uh, one of those... America's Most Wanted. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. That was the biggest celebrity we got. Biggest celebrity. Now, we had Coney in yesterday. We had all the members of Kiss in last week. I think if you're a celebrity and you want to stop by, you could do that thing. Oh, of course. Do you think they should call Rick first? Because we got to make sure they're actually celebrities. Yeah, call up. All right, if you want to be on our show and you're like famous, <laughs> you know, 212-757-1027. Yeah. All right? See how that works. There was something else I wanted to tell you really fast, but I can't remember, so I guess we'll just move on. Oh, we got to do the Furby police today. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll get into uh, talking about that in a little bit. Yeah, Furby's being sold for uh, outrageous prices. Yes, and we, uh, we're going to put a stop to that. Well, I don't know if we're going to stop it, but we sure will make the people earn their uh, $100 per Furby that they're selling them for by giving them uh, hell. Hey, man, do we have the Dave Matthews tickets to give away today? Two pairs. Two pairs in the second row for the sold-out shows at the Garden. Oof, we got to find out a cool way to... Uh, give those away. Don't worry, we won't make you eat anything today. <laughs> oh, where's that? Oh, here it is. Listen to this. <laughs> uh, it's about the Tuesday Night Harbor Club. Yeah. Inducting new members tonight, of course. Actually, uh, we're inducting new members as we speak. Right. Doesn't it start at 3 o'clock on Tuesdays? Yes, it does. That's when nighttime officially happens for the Tuesday Night Club. And uh, I guess people are... Getting it right now. Great. What a visual I got in my head. Uh, anyway, we've been members since the first Tuesday. We were on our way to a dental appointment when we heard Opie and Anthony talking about the club. Unable to resist, we became members driving in our van on Route 9 in Sayerville. Ruth and Jean wouldn't miss a Tuesday club meeting. How about that? People are uh, bragging and, and faxing us when they became, you know, members of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Uh, fax line is 212-957-WNEW. Well, Opie, somebody uh, doesn't or is really wants the, the restrictions put on you. Because <laughs> uh, obviously by now everybody knows Opie is not a member of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. No, pretty much at this point everyone knows that Opie is a loser. <laughs> a pathetic loser. Says um, Anthony, Opie must give up all authority of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. He cannot act as a representative of the club until he becomes a member. Opie should be banned from the <laughs> studio on Tuesday. Come on. This and is the thanks I get. This is the thanks I yep. get for making a lot of people happy. Huh, Anthony? Allowing Opie to participate in the Tuesday Night Hummer Club is like asking Bill Clinton to be the guest speaker at a family values seminar. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That the people have spoken. Great. Yeah, keep your abuse coming. <laughs> We got the um, Furby police? Yes, but we got to do a new one today. But people are requesting the one we did late in the show yesterday. This will give people an idea of what we do, what the Furby police are all about. Every year, there's a damn toy that uh, they say is in limited supply. Can't find it. Price skyrockets. Parents start punching each other at the store to get these for their little spoiled kids. And they don't know why, because I, I bet you if you uh, ask the kids, you know... What a Furby is, or if mm -hmm. it's the hottest toy this season, they, they wouldn't give you a straight answer. No, the parents want their kid to have a Furby. It's some marketing genius who has decided uh, that uh, the Furby is the most important toy this holiday season. They did it with the Tickle Me Elmos. They did it with the Sing and Snore Ernies. Mm -hmm. Sing and Snore Ernies all over the shelves this year. Oh, yeah. What happened? Why isn't it important this year? Why? I don't understand that. Because of the Furby, Opie. <laughs> That's a Furby. I just hope people aren't believing the hype. I had a little Furby. <laughs> so we sing the Furby sing song. The Furby song. Come on, Claire. <laughs> so we we um have some numbers. Yep. For people selling Furbies mm -hmm. at huge prices. Yeah, you just go on the internet or at, you know in any classified uh, mm -hmm. section of the paper, and you will see people trying to get 150, 200, 300 bucks for a damn Furby doll. Yeah. Which will be all over the stores uh, the day after Christmas for 29.95. So we figure uh, it's our responsibility as responsible broadcasters and journalists, mm -hmm. as we are, to um, uh, attack these people. Let them know uh, how we feel. Right. That they're, um, they're taking advantage of the children, Opie. Yeah, they're trying to make money off a, a, a children's toy. With a little Furby. Yeah. So we found a lady who mm -hmm. uh, was selling a Furby for $300. Three hundred dollars. So we called her yesterday and messed with her. I took the sick kid approach, which is kind of brutal to listen to. Oh, brutal. But take a listen. <laughs> Hello. Hi, are you selling the Furby doll? Yes, I am. How much you want for it? Um, three 
hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. If if you want more than one, we come down to two fifty. Well, uh, I don't have three hundred dollars, and it's for my my kid. Yeah. Um, she's five, and and she's got leukemia, and, and I don't know what to do. Went to about three or four stores, and they're all sold out, and I really got to come through because this could be her last Christmas. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what is your name, sir? Uh, John. And your last name? Huber. How do you spell that? H U B E R. Okay. Right. And your telephone number? Oh, this sounds a little fishy. Yeah, it does. No, I'm. Um, this isn't fishy. You sound fishy. I'm not fishy. My my kid is dying, and I need to uh, take care of this for her. No, I understand. I so. called the Make a Wish Foundation, and they didn't even have any left. It's the the, the, the dollar's so hot. Well, you said two fifty. I would come down to two fifty for you, yeah. For one. Yeah. For a sick child, two fifty. Um, I got to maybe um a hundred dollars. Okay. I'm well, a little nervous. Yeah, no, that's okay. If you give me your telephone number, you know, my husband will give you a call. What about $150? Hon, listen, we'll come down, but I just, I, my husband's handling this. <sighs> you sure you'll come down and learn a little with a sick kid? We can try. We can try, sir. Give me your telephone number. How much did it cost you? That's none of your business, sir. Well, I was just wondering. They were twenty nine ninety five, and I, I was stupid, and now I need to get one of these. Okay, well, if you give me your telephone number, we'll get back with you tomorrow afternoon. I, I need it now. I don't I don't really trust that. Sir, I live in Pennsylvania. Well, you could ship it. Yes, I could ship it, but we need the money first. I, I could get you the money for my sick kid. Yeah, well, if you give me your telephone number, my husband is handling this, sir. He will talk to you. You don't want to take advantage of a sick child, do you? No, I'm not. All right. What if um, maybe $100? Sir, I'm not to commit to anything. My husband is handling this. I'm desperate. I'll give you $100 in sexual favors, whatever it takes. You know, you're just lucky. You just called the state to police department. This is being traced. No, it's not. <laughs> and the, the state police department is selling Furbies. Yeah, I never knew that. And making an unbelievable profit doing yeah. so. <laughs> Just to call the, 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 the state police department. We're going to be the Furby police for the next three weeks. We're going to try to do a new one today. So Furby police. Keep listening. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, two for Tuesday with the cars on the way. We got uh, Rush. Also, we got a guy on hold. He needs our help, Anthony. We're going to talk to him in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes here. Oh, Hummer Club, yes. Uh, a guy named Frank desperately needs our help to try to become a member of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club tonight. He's been uh, unsuccessful, like myself. Well, we're um, we're doing great with getting the, the lady folk to um, give their guy the Hummer. Yeah, I think this is the fourth week. Fourth week of the club, Rick? Fourth week. Because our producer, Rick, is a three-time member. Congratulations. Keep it here. Whoa, yourself. look at that. That's not too shabby. Yeah, By the way, when... guy. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. I know. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But uh, once you become a member, you're you're in for good. You're uh, in. By yeah. the way, it's a nice conversation piece when you're out and about on the weekends. Of course it is. But, uh, yeah, we've been very successful. We've been calling the wives at home for the last uh, four weeks. I believe we're about uh, six for six, Anthony. Yeah. We've, we've talked six lovely ladies into giving their man a Hummer. Starting to feel invincible. Yeah, I think we could keep it going here. We'll keep the streak alive, and uh, we'll do that with Frank next, hopefully. Okay. But you're talking about some kind of uh, toy recall, Anthony? Oh, my God, Opie. There was, uh, I heard on 1010 Wins today. 1010 Wins. All news, all day, all night. Tune in now. Oh, my God. Don't turn that effing dial. Turn the dial. Something. My God. You're going to freak out. Yeah. I heard that there's a, a toboggan. That they're um, selling, and uh, it's being recalled because <laughs> uh, it cracks in the front Wait, and could go out of control and be very dangerous. First of all, how do you screw up uh, making a toboggan? <laughs> I know. Isn't it like a sheet of, what, hard plastic and a rope? That's pretty much it. What's, what, the, what is the problem? They used a different color rope on this uh, toy? <laughs> how could they have a recall on a toboggan? Well, the front of the toboggan snaps off. Yeah. And um, it could, this is the funniest part I heard, and uh, the toboggan can then go out of control. Have you ever been in a toboggan that was in control? No. You pile on these things, yeah. go to the steepest hill, yeah. and just go down. Yeah. There's no steering. Well, at least, There's no control. At least you had toboggans as a kid. We were so poor, one of seven, that we really couldn't afford sleds. What did you do, garbage pail lid? 
Um, gar- oh, wow. No, I didn't. Like a flying saucer. No, we either used the big, you know, black garbage bags. Garbage bags? On snow? Hello? Oof. But the best one, because we were rebuilding the house, my brothers, they should call in. Um, we'd get a big, huge piece of paneling. <laughs> yeah. And with the nice, smooth finish. Sure. <laughs> walk it up to the top of the hill behind our house. We'd all pile on that thing. That's uh, not too <laughs> dangerous, right? Oh, my Lord. Woo! It was great. Shushing down the hill. It was great. I think my brother Scott, like, uh, launched himself over the fence once. <laughs> it's amazing we're not dead from the toys we had as kids. Well, that, you know what happens? They they start recalling toys now, and uh, if the least little thing is, is wrong with it or bad or dangerous, which is fine. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. But we grew up, uh, toys in, in, like, the 70s, um, there was no rhyme or reason to these things. Do you remember... Incredible Edibles <laughs> yes. by Mattel. Yeah. You took a, a metal mold, poured this chemical into it, and put it in this blazing hot stove that you plugged in. Mm-hmm. It's like the, there was a fire hazard, a poison hazard, all kinds of hazard. You pull out the little metal thing, pull out the bug, and you ate it. Yeah. You ate this rubber thing that came out of a bottle. And what would you do when you ran out of the goo, the edible goo? I'll put your soldiers in there. And melt candles, your candles. Melt your crayons. And you'd still eat them because you didn't know better as a kid. Oh, why not? You thought, you know, cooking it would uh, make it uh, yeah. t- tasty. That was a little dangerous, I think. Not as dangerous as lawn darts. Lawn darts were another very dangerous toy. You ever played the lawn dart game? Because it got boring after a while. Mm-hmm. We used to, you know, make the circles. Yeah. And then, you know, you had to stand in the circle. And if you jumped out of the circle as the darts coming your way, you, you lost two points. And <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that's a little dangerous. A little dangerous. They recalled those, didn't they? Uh, or they just stopped making them. I think they finally started making lawn darts with, I don't know, like... Uh, Velcro or something. Velcro or something yeah. stupid, yeah. How about the lead molding kits where you made lead soldiers? I remember a friend of mine had this. You would take lead... Put it in this little cauldron and put it over a burner and melt it. Mm -hmm. Then you would pour it into a metal mold. And uh, after, you know, 24 hours, I think you were supposed to wait, you broke the mold apart. And there was a lead soldier. Right? Yeah. Sounds uh, great. Right. If you're you're a guy working in a metal factory. For a kid, first of all, kids have no patience. So you pour this hot lead in. And what do you do? Five minutes. Oh, that's long enough. Crack it open. <laughs> There's a little lead grenade. They, I, I haven't seen those in years. No. Click clacks. Click clacks. Uh, uh, the, the most dangerous toy ever invented. So I, I will challenge our listeners. Come up with a more dangerous toy than click clacks. Than click clacks. I went into school. Uh, it was, I believe, elementary school when these things came out. And everyone had them. And you would get these things wailing. Like, like you were supposed to have a meat at the bottom. There were two big glass balls on strings. Mm-hmm. And they met at the bottom, and you kind of click, 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 until they really started banging off each other. Yeah. And then you'd put your hand up and down real fast, and it would it would come over the top of your hand, click up top, and then come at the bottom, click at the bottom, so fast you couldn't even see it. Yes. And then occasionally, these things would shatter, and shrapnel would go <laughs> flying all over, and just take out eyes, and kids in the, the playground. <laughs> Blood. It was like nom. I got a toy for you. I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was where you made your own balloons. You put the little goop Ooh. on the end of the on, uh, at yes. the, end of the straw. That, yeah. that stuff had to be toxic. Oh, it was. It smelt like it. What was it called though? Oh yeah, those big rubbery balloons. It looked like a big garbage bag when you were done with it. <laughs> yeah. It was made out of the same stuff too. I, I believe it was some form of lead. Yeah, it was like this rainbow thing. Right, right. Thing. And you just put a little piece on the end of the straw and just, you know, blew away. Super elastic bubble plastic. Is that what it was called? Super elastic, elastic bubble, bubble plastic. plastic, yeah. And and if, if you were blowing up the balloon and for some reason you inhaled back in, mm-hmm. noxious fumes would go right into your lungs. Right. And uh, you'd uh, be retarded, I think, for the rest of your life. Wow, the phone's are going nuts. Line three has a dangerous toy, all right? More dangerous than click clacks. Hi, NEW. Guys. Yes. These were called kerbangers. They weren't called clip clops. Click clacks. Click clacks. Click yeah. clacks. They were called kerbangers. Not, not on the island. Well, they were, they were Don't probably... Don't you remember the commercial? 
I remember them as click clacks. I remember them as click clacks. Why you walk a bangers? Why you talk a bangers? They won't chip shatter or peel to know. And in the backpack of bangers, we'll glow. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the the cheap version. Yeah, that was when they Good tried. Version. They didn't. They didn't explode. Oh, well, that then they're not a click clacks. I'm talking the dangerous click clacks made out of glass. Where you hit yourself in the temple and then decide enough with the stupid click clacks. Yeah. It was like a little kid trying to work nunchucks. You could use them as like that Australian like hunting weapon. Yeah. What do they call yeah. those? A the bolo? bolo? Right. Yeah, well, it was like a bolo. Do, after we got, my, me and my brother got sick of them, we used to throw them at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah, some, somehow the toys never ended up being used the way they were supposed to be used. Of, no. course, of course not. I mean, how many of us use the orange uh, Hot Wheel tracks to have, like, sword fights with your brother? Of you know? course. <laughs> Whack him on the side of the face, and he's got that Hot Wheel track red stripe going down his cheek. Hey, you, <laughs> come downstairs for dinner, and you got the Hot Wheel track on <laughs> <in> your face. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get you back after dinner. We're going to have a pillow fight. And, and we... <laughs> Clicks on the island. Yeah, yeah well, the early, early ones they were. Maybe, oh, maybe they yeah. changed them and made them safer and changed the name. Yeah, or something. yeah they were like a whammo product after a while. No, no, they sent us the toys that were prototypes. We were the guinea pigs to see if these things work. You remember a little something called the uh, Hot Wheels uh, powerhouse? Oh yeah. It was this this orange roofed looking Howard Johnson's looking building. They still make those. And you put the track in there and it had these foam rubber wheels inside that spun around real fast. Right, so it could shoot the car out. Yeah, the principle was that the car would just about slow down, get in the house and then spin back around the track. Right. Well, what we would do is line it up without the track coming out the other side and shoot it at my little sister. So she'd come in the room and this is one of Hot Wheels car. Boom. <laughs> 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 I did not. That that didn't make it to rock. Yeah. Okay. Oh, great little toy. Well, thanks for your uh, your help here today. My pleasure. All right, man. Take care. He got the wussy version of the click clack. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony, and the phones are lit. We're talking about dangerous toys when we were growing up because they just had a recall on a stupid toboggan. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, we had much more dangerous toys when we were growing up. Yeah. And we're going through a few of these now. And uh, the faxes are spitting out, the instant feedback. Well, you were saying um, you didn't have a toboggan. No, we used paneling. Paneling. Someone else, Karen, says uh, we went sledding in those big disposable turkey cooking tins. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love that. Now, when we all were sledding when we were younger, because everyone knows it doesn't snow anymore, uh, did everyone have a dead man's hill? Yeah, or a suicide hill. Or a suicide yeah, hill where, the, you know, there was folklore, like someone broke their skull and yeah. it, was, it was dangerous and, and you were always very scared, but you had to take a run on suicide hill. Oh, that's why Bobby's the way he is. <laughs> yeah. He was going down suicide hill and hit his head on a rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Super elastic bubble plastic mm -hmm. is back. What do you says mean Mindy. Back? How could I've that possibly be back? That's dangerous. Really cheesy commercials for it. I think I saw those, too. And now they advertise it as having a one-way straw, so you can only blow through it one way. Okay, because that's the deal. When we were kids, you used to inhale the stuff, and we found out it was lead or something. Mm -hmm. So they took it off the market. Let's see. Chris, when we were kids, we used to freeze the hard-boiled eggs from Easter to June and have frozen egg yolk fights. <laughs> Oof. That would hurt. Sure would. And Pete said, oh, yeah, I remember this. Remember the pump-up water rockets? The red the red rocket. Yeah, the red rocket with a clear piece of uh, plastic on it. You put some water in there. Mm -hmm. You pump that thing up. <laughs> Only 10 pumps, please. Yes. Never more than 10. So after, like, 70, when you can't, <laughs> the rod starts bending, you shoot it straight up in the air away from everybody, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> you shoot it sideways at your brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, I'm telling mom. <laughs> See, those things would reach 300 feet in a second. Yeah. So the velocity is pretty. That could be more dangerous than click clacks. Mm -hmm. We always had the younger brother hold the rocket <laughs> when it just wanted to go. It's like, no, hold it down tight. Yeah, we hold get, it. Down. We got to get a few more pumps in. It's ready to snap <laughs> off. Well, wow, let's go to the phones here. Everyone's got a dangerous <laughs> toy. Any W. Yeah, how's it going? All right. Yeah, I used to have a James Bond attaché case. Oh, the James Bond attaché case. What was that it about? It shot like missiles at him. Yeah, you know, I, I hit my sister in the forehead, and the thing got thrown out. It had the knife that came out of the end. If you didn't know the right combination, a knife would cut out, would pop out of the side of it. Yeah. 
And it had, like, guns that you could fire from uh, the handle. Oh, yeah, it was wild. And you open it up and pull out a machine gun. I had it for about a week until I hit my sister in the fire with the missile. <laughs> it all came down to that. There you go. Hitting sister on the head, and then you lost your toy. That's it, man. <laughs> Very good. All right, buddy. buddy. All right. Take it easy. I really don't remember that one. I remember that one. Yeah. How about how about the um that little laser looking gun that had Mr. Spock's picture on it and it shot those little wafer discs? <laughs> yeah. That was pretty dangerous. <laughs> it always hit someone in the eye. Right with in that. the eyeball. But now they make those out of stupid styrofoam. Yeah, it's so they foam. just bounce off uh, foam or whatever, bounce off your forehead. Yeah. Hey, what do you got, man? Hey, uh, yeah, I was thinking about uh, Dangerous Toys. Um, the one I was thinking of was the Incredible Head Shrinker, where it was advertised by Vincent Price, and you put an apple into these chemicals, and it shrinks it down, and you paint it and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was all a spooky commercial. You can shrink a head. Totally. Absolutely. <laughs> and you did. You put an apple in chemicals. God knows what they were. Yeah, and it never really worked either. It always just fell apart when you went to go paint it. <laughs> and the paints were probably caustic, too. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. That's pretty dangerous. Very good. I forgot all about that They'd one. never get away with selling that now. And, you know, definitely not. And another one was an upgrade from the one you had said, where you pull the string and the car goes. Yeah. It was Smash em Up Derby. Oh, yeah. I remember Smash em Up Derby. Yeah, where it was like what you said, except when it hit something, all the pieces flew off into everybody's eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, very little pieces. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Thanks. Sure. Bye. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the phones are just lit. We'll, we'll take a few more in a minute here, but we got Angie on the line. Angie. we got to talk to Angie real fast. Uh, let me read her latest facts. Topi and Anthony. Hi, Angie again. Not sure if John got my invite to join the Tuesday Night Hummer Club tonight. I know he listens in his car on the way home. So once again, John, meet me at the Elm Street Park so I can get you into the Hummer Club. Be there at 530. Your Hummer is waiting. Angie. 20 minutes. Angie. Hello. You think he's going to show up? Um, I don't know. I really don't. I would hope so. Yeah? <laughs> I just hope you guys go somewhere else now that everyone knows you're just waiting there to give him a Hummer. <laughs> I'm just going to meet him there. You know, I just remember the, the Son of Sam cases when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah. Just go somewhere else now. No, I don't think um, Son of Sam or, or Jason was in Corny, you know. Yeah. So I, I think uh, I think John is racing over there right now. <laughs> well, I just hope he doesn't get himself killed getting there. Yeah, if the cops... Coming, coming and going at the same time would really be terrible. There you go. If the cops are listening, if uh, you pull over anyone named John, give the guy a break. Oh, he, he really? He'll be on his way to a Hummer. Hello? Alisa? Yeah? It's Opie and Anthony from WNEW Radio. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Okay. Why? Well, we... What did we... my husband do? Well, he didn't do anything bad. Okay. No, he's a good guy. He sounds like a real nice guy oh, yeah. on, the, on the phone. He uh, asked us for um, for some help. Have you heard about the Tuesday Night Hummer Club yet? Yes, I heard. Oh, you have? And what do you think of our lovely club? Not much. Why don't you think much of the club? Because I'm very busy. When? I have two children and two jobs. Well, that's why we started the club. Oh, yeah? Yeah, sort of gets uh, the married couples and the couples with a lot of responsibility back into the groove of the uh, days when they could just do those things, you know? Those days aren't here. We're too busy. I'm too busy anyway. No. Right you... now I'm doing homework with my seven and a half year old. Oh, but you got to find... And it's really not fun. Oh, you got to find the time though. Yeah. Yeah, don't you yeah. think? Don't no. you remember the old days when you guys used to run around the house naked and stuff and have fun? <laughs> Ten years ago. Hard to remember. Oh, oh wow. Something happened here, huh? Yeah. Well, how about you guys like try to recapture the flame tonight? I'm working. Oh. I doubt it. Oh, this oh. is looking bad. This, is, this will be our first defeat. Are you, are you serious? This is my week off. You just don't enjoy giving a... Uh... This is my week off. Ask him what that means. What does that mean? It means it's my week off. Yeah, but we don't know what it, that means. So you don't want to give homers on your week off? This is my week off. I don't do anything on my week off. Oh, my wow. Lord. <laughs> Would you like to talk to your husband? No, not right now, actually. Oh. oh, is he in trouble when he gets home? He's in trouble. Oh, you poor kids. I, I, I don't see this, uh, this marriage getting any better. How long have you been married? Almost 10 years. You resigned to the fact that you're older, responsible, you have things to do, and never again will you reclaim those times where you gave each other, uh, let's say, uh, oral pleasures. I have to go now. <laughs> my seven-year-old just left her book. Oh. We have a health test tomorrow. It's health. done. A health oh, test? Why don't you guys uh, do a little health lesson tonight? I'm working. All right. Well, have a lovely life. Thank I feel you. so bad. All right. Bye. bye. This couple. Oof. Frank. Yep. 
Frank, it was uh, it was brutal. It was ugly. Yeah. yeah. I figured. Yeah, she uh, she wasn't even coming close. <laughs> Boy, you got a rough one over there, dude. <laughs> we were talking to her. She wasn't budging. I, I suggest uh, divorce. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see that as the only way out of it. We we spoke with her. I understood in, in a quick uh, three minutes what it was like being married to her. <laughs> the kids, the whole homework thing. She's working. She's tired. Leave her alone. It's her week off, it's whatever that means. Off. What does that mean? That's a... a of her way out of it? Well, yeah, it's the excuse. You know, it's the uh, don't bother me this week. I'm, you know. Oof. All right. Something tells me it's been almost 10 years off. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank. I don't know what else we can do for you except call you a poor bastard. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not doing much better, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, man. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. And there he goes, Frank. <laughs> Feel, oh, it's just we were brutal. we were conquered. That's the first uh, time we've been denied. Usually the ladies go for it. God, she sounded miserable. Yeah, so you, see, that's the type of thing we're just trying to. That's the exact reason why we started the club. Yeah, because there's a lot of guys and ladies in that exact same predicament. But when they're in that situation, it might be too late. Mm -hmm. That's that's the example that's too late. Mm -hmm. But if we get to these people a little earlier, before they're that miserable and that um, unwilling, then maybe we can save them. Yes. That's a lost cause right there. That's what they call a terminal case. Anthony, I think our club's going bad because now there's another guy in the line that's ticked off at us. What now? What happened to you? Yeah, I got a bone to pick with the Tuesday Night Elmer Club now. Why? What happened? What happened was last Tuesday, uh, I was getting, you know, a bit friendly with my girlfriend, and uh, I was about, I was in the process of becoming a member. Right, right, right. Be careful. And yes, I happened to let it slip okay, that, okay, okay. that I was happy, <laughs> that I was happy to, right. to be becoming a member, and right. I said I could not wait to call you guys, and uh, all, all of a sudden it was interrupted. Oh, she didn't like that. No, fact, no, but... and she just said, you know, what are you, what are you talking about? Oh, no. And I said, well, see, there's this club, you see. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That was no. wrong, apparently. That's brutal. Right. Oh, she, oh. You know, there's a lot of couples that uh, both know, both sides know exactly what's going on, and then there's those those sneak memberships where you're becoming a member, and she has no idea that she is uh, making you a member. Right. Oh. I thought she might appreciate it. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I didn't say I was wrong. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I, she hasn't actually uh, talked to me now uh, <laughs> since uh, I was able to talk to her last Wednesday. And since then, I've been shut out pretty much. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, man. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, I don't give a... I still think, though, that I, I, I am going to claim my membership, uh, you know. Well, if it was happening on a Tuesday, because we get this question all the time, does it have to be done to completion? Right. That, that, not, that, not necessarily, no. as okay. long as you're, uh, you know... Oh, you, you, you stupid! <laughs> <laughs> it's my own fault. I uh, yeah. you, you had it made. Yeah, it was right there, so to speak. Yeah, yes. Was, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Guys. All right, buddy. Take care. Well, needless to say, um, if uh, she knows nothing of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club, and you happen to be lucky enough to be uh, getting one on a Tuesday, um, keep your mouth shut. At least until it's done. Yeah, even after that. Yeah, whatever. All right, we got two from Van Halen next. 1027 WNEW. The Rock of New York. Two for Tuesday with Van Halen. Somebody get me a doctor and everybody wants some. We'll uh, send that song out to everyone that uh, wants to become a member of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. Yeah. I believe uh, we have a guy that mm. uh, got it on the train. Want to talk to him really fast? On the train? Which train? Oh, we gotta you talk do to that. this guy. Yo, bro. Hello. What happened? What do you mean? Well, you you remember now? Yes, I am. So what happened? Well, I was uh, I was on the train. All right, be careful. All right. No problem. What uh, train? Uh, it was uh, it was the train coming back to uh, to Greenwich from New York. Okay. And uh, I was on there with my girlfriend, and uh, I was listening to it on my Walkman. And I I handed it to her, let her listen to it, and uh, we decided she decided that she. Wanted to become a member right then and there, so we uh, we one at a time snuck into the the, the stall and uh, did the deed. <laughs> snuck into the bathroom stall. In the bathroom stall? Yes. Did anyone know what was going on in there? I don't think so, but I, I'll tell you, it's it's quite a deed to try and squeeze into that bathroom with two people. Oh, baby. 
baby, yeah, keep... Oh, oh, baby, baby, baby. It's like the little train from Disney. <laughs> Climb aboard, kids, and get your armor. Wow, congratulations, you're a member now. Well, thank you. Now, see, you're using a, a smart tactic. We've uh, encouraged the guys to make sure they get their ladies to listen to our show on Tuesday, and, and we'll do all the work for you guys. Great icebreaker, yeah. See, you knew we were talking about the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. You handed the Walkman over to her, and she was uh, open to the idea. Brilliant move. Brilliant Bravo. move. Bravo to you. We bow to you today. Yeah, great move. <laughs> wow. I wouldn't have thought of that. Congratulations. Thank you. And I, I think we should, uh, we should see if we can take some kind of a collection for Opie so we can actually become a member now. Well, we're going to try once again tonight, so wish me luck, okay? <laughs> All right. All right, man. Thanks, guys. Very cool. Another member oh. of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. you got to love that. Now, uh, Anthony, you want to do the Furby Police? We kind of promised it here. Yep. I think it's our duty, our civic duty, Opie. All right. The Furby doll is the hottest uh, item this holiday season. And, uh, of course, a lot of radio stations are giving away a chance to win a Furby. Yes. Yeah, so they're going to they're gonna have, um, uh, you know, some... <laughs> <laughs> Some lame-o promotion. Yeah, you, you just bid on the, the Furby doll, and it goes to the highest bidder, and then they'll give the money to a charity, and it looks like everyone is doing a good deed. Yeah. Well, I, th I don't think anyone should be believing the hype on these stupid Furby no, dolls. No. Sing and Snore Ernie last year, Tickle Me Elmo the year before. If you go into the toy stores now, there's a ton of Tickle Me Elmos and a ton of uh, Sing and Snore Ernie dolls. Yeah. You know? And it's the ridiculous. same thing is going to happen with the Furby doll. People are, you know, so desperate. They're, they're going through the classifieds, and they're going to spend two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 on a Furby doll just so their kid has it when they open up their presents uh, Christmas morning. Ridiculous. So we have become the Furby police, Anthony. Yep, we um, pick out people that are taking advantage of the children, selling little Furby dolls. Hopey. Yes. And uh, we call them up mm -hmm. and harass them. Mm hmm and berate them, yes, and generally uh, piss them off. And make them feel bad. Yeah. If we can. Well, we found uh, somebody right here in the city that is mm -hmm. selling a S-load of Furby dolls. Mm -hmm. An S-load. And get the price? $300. Another $300? Yeah. For the Furby doll. Yeah. We can't read the classify because we don't want them to know that we are calling right now. No. All right. Uh, I did the last one. I used a sick kid yeah. tactic. Uh, what do you want to use? I feel uh, perhaps I should use some muscle. Mm -hmm. Perhaps maybe the family ought to get involved. Okay. A little of the uh, the mafia. Oh. Yeah. We'll the take the uh, the mobster uh, attack on this one. I think. All right. We got to get you your music here, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Miss. I was looking at your ad in the papers. Yes, are you interested? Not exactly. I oh, got a, I got a proposition, though. What's the proposition? I have acquired through certain means a tractor trailer full of these little Furby dolls. Uh huh. I at this moment have no place to put them or to uh, distribute them. Uh huh. I would like your help. I in can't help you at all, sir. And Excuse me? I can't help you at all. I won't do nothing illegal, okay? Bye-bye. Wait a minute, miss. Ah, oh, dude, you got to call her back. Hello? Please do not hang up on me and hear me out. This is very important. Uh-huh. Is this the party to whom I was just speaking? That was my mother you were speaking. Who's this? Okay. My name is Bruno Tatalia. I have a proposition. <laughs> I have a tractor trailer full of little Furby dolls. Right. I need them to be distributed. I have no means. I would like to know if you would like to maybe enter a partnership with me and a few of my friends. And what do I get out of it? You get, let's say, a cut of the action. Plus, if we can ever do a favor for you, we will be there for you uh -huh. to help you and maybe your family. All right. What do you want me to do with the dolls? You want me to hold them? What do you want me to do? You hold on and distribute them. All right. For me and my family. How much for a doll? We're talking a thousand dollars each doll. That ain't happening. You will be in charge of advertising. Can't happen. I, I can't even get three hundred a doll now. You will get a thousand dollars a doll. Uh huh. Of which my organization will get ninety eight percent of the profits. You will keep two. And your legs. <laughs> You're funny. Funny how? Funny how funny I make you laugh? Yeah. Why don't you come to my house and keep talking like you're talking? I will come to your house. Yeah, come on. I will come to your house. Three, maybe, three, maybe. three. Come right now. I will Tell come. me what you're going to do to my legs. Maybe. You're a joke, Me bro. and a few of my If you my only babies. knew who the f*** 
fuck you're talking well, to? Well, come over there. I know who I'm talking to, pal. Come over here. All right, you want me to come there with my boys? <laughs> come right now. So you'll be taking a dirt nap and snoring, my friend. Oh, you got me so scared. Do you understand me? I don't understand nothing. I you're believe saying. we have an agreement. Punk? And we'll you're able to on keep talking. You call me a punk? You're a punk. You're a punk. punk. Come to my house. You, I'll come to your house. Come to my house right now. I'll call your dial seller. Three, your three, dial three. seller. Avenue. Come to my house, pussy. I'm there, you jack off. Pussy. You're a pussy, you <laughs> jack off. So you sell my dolls? Come to Thousand dollars. <laughs> You're a funny guy, but come to my house. I'll be there. N right now. I'll, I'm coming. Apartment 3E. All right. Now. I'm there. I'll kill you and your mother, your father, whoever the f*** you want to bring. I'm coming now. Are you going to me or am I going to f*** you in the <laughs> Which one? <laughs> It depends what your mother wants to do. Which one, sir? Whatever your mother feels like doing, sucking my your whatever she wants to do. So I get to put my up your No, you're going to put up your mother's All right, that sounds great. Come right now. I'm coming. Right now. Sounds great, my friend. Bring your mother, though. Uh, bye bye <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Did he hang up? <laughs> not, I don't believe uh, he wants to enter a partnership with me and my family. Uh, that was Anthony. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> what are you, crazy? Well, we got to get tough sometimes with the uh, singing snow. <laughs> You're acting like Furby a mafia police. guy, and, and that guy, it sounded like he was part of the mafia. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I hope he doesn't whack me. I, I had nothing to do with that. That was Anthony. I'm sorry. The one that looks like a terrorist when, hey, he, when he leaves the building. Leave me alone. The one who looks like a terrorist. He's the little Furby seller, not me. <laughs> My Lord. All right, great, Ed. Thanks. I'm sorry. Thanks. We really need that on our side. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hard to sit through. Soapy and Anthony, I don't think we'll be doing the Furby police bit anymore. Yes, we will. <laughs> I don't care about that guy. He was nothing. Oh, yeah. I'll teach him. And you guys are all cute calling up as, as that guy's cousin. We really appreciate the yeah the abuse. Like ten phone calls from people. Was that the, the phone call you took from my son? <laughs> you will pay daily for... Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. We got a lady that uh, uh, has a good idea for the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. We like hearing those. Hi, Annie W. How you doing? All right. I just want to let you know how men and women in your listening area can both benefit in your Hummer Club. Ooh, all right. Okay. Um, my husband and I, um, I was charging him $20. Every time cash on demand, we saved up for our house that way. Wait a minute. You charged him 20 bucks every time he wanted one? 20 bucks cash on demand. 40 bucks? 20 bucks 20... cash on demand. And it was cash on demand. Yeah, sometimes I'd give them a discount depending on my mood. You must have gave a, a lot of hummers if it, you saved up for a house. We got it. <laughs> yeah. What, what would you do, do for a hundred? What would I do for a hundred? Yeah. Oh. Screw this twenty dollars a shot. You can. <laughs> Anything he wanted. Wow. Come <laughs> to down my here. husband. We'll give you a grand. Put you on the rotisserie and play cards on your back. <laughs> I just thought it would benefit both for everybody, so I wanted to share it with you. you. You really did this, huh? Yeah, and I got a vacation one year, too. Now, how many hummers do you think you performed in a year? I don't know. Do the math. 300. You pretty much went every night. One a night, you know. A couple nights off. Works out. <laughs> to give your jaw a rest. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. That's what it should be anyways, right? Wow. So you get paid $20 for it, and hey, you're both happy. All right, we'll throw it out there, see if anyone buys it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Take it easy. Bye. Bye-bye. Interesting, huh? Wow. 300. That's a lot. <laughs> I haven't had that much in my lifetime. <laughs> you, try work on one. <laughs> the Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey. And I believe we have a lady on the line that has a question about the uh, Tuesday Night Hermit Club, Anthony. All right. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Ann. How are you? Hi, Ann. Good. We got you live in the air, so, like, don't curse. Okay. All right. All right, I have a question for you about the Hummer Club. Yes. Oh, we answer any questions from ladies okay. about the Hummer Club. All right, well, here's the thing. My husband wants to get in the Hummer Club. Yeah. So I'm a good sport. Uh -huh. I got him in the club. All well, right. that means you're in the club, too, by the way. Okay, cool. We're both in the club. All right, well, this is what I want to know, like, the details of membership. 
I mean, do I now have to give this man a Hummer every Tuesday for the rest of creation? Because that's what he seems to say. <laughs> Look, he's working it. And I'm kind well, of, you know, I feel like we're in the club. That's a good thing. Yeah. Now, you know. Are you going to renew your membership every once in a while, though? Or, well, or mean, are you just going to let it run out? Uh, there well, should I'm be, like, my, an I'm expiration. i my membership at my discretion, you know. Well, we haven't discussed this issue on our show yet. Nice kid, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> what is he, like, right by the phone? Like right by the phone. Oh, really? Couldn't tell by how loud he is. Mommy, I want a Furby doll. <laughs> mommy, I want a Furby doll. Furby doll. <laughs> mommy, mommy, Furby doll. <laughs> Furby. It talks to other Furbies. <laughs> well, what I need you guys to do is to explain to my husband on the air that. He doesn't have to renew his membership every week. Well, the the rule states that once you're in, you're in. But uh, honestly, I think there should be an expiration date on on your membership. I mean, I yeah. if you go, if you go, week. no, not a week. I mean, we got to be fair. But if you're going like if uh, three months, um, excuse me, wait, wait. Is is Opie trying to uh, legislate some type of oh, yeah, new yeah. bylaws here? Uh, uh, Am I hearing a guy who isn't even a member? I forgot making it. up rules. I forgot. Excuse me. I forgot. Anthony is the grand poobah, of even course. though I created the club and he sits there with that big, fat, goofy, stupid grand poobah hat on his head. I gotta All wear right, my man. big grand poobah hat every Tuesday. Let's see how you legislate. Go ahead. Okay, I think indeed there should be. Some sort of an expiration, like there is on a license. Okay. Um, but not uh, a week. Oh, not a week? No, that's that's crazy. Well, it's kind of cold for your guy. <laughs> but we know it wouldn't work, so you can't get greedy, guys. Come on. Yeah, we'd be lo losing members uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty quickly. Yeah. I think, I, uh, I think I, in all fairness, like three months? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, three months. I would good. say. Thanks, Three months. So he better write it on the calendar when his, uh, you know, membership's going to expire. Because I have a feeling that's the next time he's going to get it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Oh, oh kids. Eesh. That's fair, though, right? Yeah. Three months, and you have to re-up. And you have to re-up. That's how it works. You'll get a couple of memberships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll have to get a couple. I don't know if you could, like, store them. <laughs> if you get two in a row, can you store it? Well, there's a bank it. But there's a couple things happening with the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. Yes, there is. Yes, uh, you're not getting them. Uh, obviously. Oh, oh, besides I, that. The whole damn world knows that now. But uh, <laughs> there are guys that get it once, and that's it. They're members, and it's a nice conversational piece. Yeah. On the weekends. There's other guys that are bragging because they're like three-time, four-time members. Yeah, like Rick over here. Like Rick, our producer, is three for three, going for four tonight. And uh, these people are, are putting little things on their car to show, you know, yeah. how many times they have uh, mm -hmm. up their membership. What a guy. What it's a kind of like being like a, a five-star general, I think. <laughs> you know, you, you, you get it done once every three months, you're in. Yes, you're yeah. a member. But it's also very cool, you know, if you could keep the streak alive. Well... <laughs> You gotta get it, get it going. Oh, I'm gonna try, man. Mm -hmm. I'll try. So, what's Dave doing here? Dave, stockbroker Dave. How's your uh, How's your sack? Come here. Yeah, get over here so we can abuse you for a while. <laughs> Look at him turning around. He's in his cute little Wall Street suit. Look at you. I notice you're uh, you're not limping anymore. No, you're back to normal. Back to normal. No anyway. pain at all. No well, let's uh, let's update the people because we're getting listeners every every day. Dave had a uh, mastectomy live on our show mm -hmm. about a week and a half ago. Was it a week and a half ago already? Yeah. Oh man. Now uh, you're fine. I'm fine. No pain. No pain. How, how long did uh, you have any discomfort? Four or five days. Four or five days. Lots of vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he put frozen vegetables like packages of bird's eye veg vegetables or something. Food town. But, uh, food food town, yeah, the town. cheap. My wife you might as well cheap. use the cheap brand. Sure. My wife is cheap. And now you, uh, you have had a, a sexual encounter. Yes, the fair lady Jill. Uh, All right, took one for the team. All right, <laughs> and everything worked just fine. All the plumbing we heard, works. we heard horror stories that sometimes worked guys, perfect. And it did it feel just as good as uh, just as before good. the operation? That's very good because that was something you were worried about. It was perfect. You didn't right. spring a leak like one of those lawn hoses <laughs> with the holes in them that you put near your garden or anything. Nope. Yeah. I yeah. want to know how bad the guys rode you back at the, oh. the stock market. Ah, oh, forget about it. <laughs> really? <laughs> I had to walk around with a red X on my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> So nobody would bump into me. <laughs> That's nobody pretty good. Bump into me. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was just afraid. Yeah. You run around and get hit. Well, it's busy on the floor. I'm crying like a baby. Yeah, you don't want anybody jostling no. the jewels. Did anyone no. bring anything uh, to you? No, Interesting I just stuff. Kept talk about the frozen vegetables and yeah. bird's eye and green giant. Now you walk around. Ha, ha, ha. Right. You walk around a lot on the floor. You got to be fast. Got to be quick. Back and Before forth. Um, how'd you do that if you're hurting? <laughs> Did I you wasn't limp? hurting. You were I'm telling you. God, that's amazing. That's Rick. The doctor was great. Yeah. You know, except when he pulled the tape off my penis. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest part about oh. the operation. Here's a guy with a scalpel, you know, just going to town on your genitals. And then the operation's done. He stitches you up. And then he takes the tape that is uh, Rick, hold, hold, lying? holding your Johnson down, what, across your belly or whatever? And he just... And then he goes... <laughs> <"Wait."> <laughs> it off. And I, I'm t that was the only... That's, Anthony, that was the only pain. That was the only pain. We heard it live on the air. Oh, you went... Ah! That was the only pain. <laughs> That's too funny. But, uh, yeah, the guy was gentle with my sack, but he was very, very uh, rough on my... Uh, on the tape on, that was holding your tape. Johnson on your belly. Yeah, yeah. All right, quickly, you, uh, we need a little inside information here. What are you looking at as far as the market goes? The market acted well today. It was just down 120, finished up 16, but uh, it's good. It's going to get hit. It's going to go to 8,000 probably by March or April. You think so? Yeah, I do. Uh, through the rest yeah. of the year, through the January, you're looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. choppy. All right. Up, up and down, down, up and down, up and down. Volatility is back, I got a feeling. Who cares? Uh, Long-termers don't care. Yeah. Well, opportunity, though. In there. Exactly. Today, you had a good opportunity. Yeah. And uh, you're going to get a lot of opportunities over the next six months. And so just have some cash on the side. All right. All right. It's our pal, Vasectomy Dave. Vasectomy <laughs> Dave. <laughs> it was a pleasure, boy. Really. <laughs> oh, man. The Tuesday night uh, Hummer Club members are ticked off at Anthony. Well, now, come no, on. No, 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 no. We'll get into the controversy next. But people are freaking out on, uh, at your new law that you just decided to put down tonight. <laughs> I have spoken. Oh, my Lord. I don't go with the polls. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Two for Tuesday. Kiss from Psycho Circus. You wanted the best. And Ace Freely doing his little tune there, New York Groove. It's Opie and Anthony. Hello. Now, um, we have started this lovely membership, the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. Mm -hmm. I think uh, most of the city knows about it by now. Yes. Been the talk of the town for the last month. And um, who created the club? Opie created the club for all the lonely couples out there. Right. He came up with the idea. Because I wasn't getting any at home, and I figured this was a great way to uh, help myself out uh -huh. and help others out. Unfortunately, I have been unsuccessful to join my own club. Now, so, it's so first what, week oh, oh, I became oh, a member. Oh, okay. So, so what did Anthony do after two weeks went by and I didn't become a member of the club I created? Uh, I uh, put it to a vote. Right. To the, to the listeners uh -huh. to wrestle... The grand, the huge grand poobah hat yeah. from your head, yeah. yeah, because you cannot be grand poobah if you are not a member. Okay. So I have uh, taken control of the, the club. Tuesday Night Hummer Club, right? As there's, you see, because I'm wearing the huge grand poobah. There's pretty hat. much a coup d'état. Yes. Okay. So you got the grand poobah hat on now, right? So you 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 lay the law of the club down, right, Anthony? I am the titular head of the organization. Okay. All right. I hope the listeners are are hearing me here. Now, Anthony, about 20 minutes ago, yes. we had a lovely young lady on the phone live, mm -hmm. and she needed uh, some, uh, some clarification about some of the rules of the club. Yes. And, and, and what did you say to everyone out there in Radio Land? That there is now an expiration date on, the, on membership. Oh, oh, okay. Just like anything else, okay. a driver's license, yeah. anything yeah. else. Yeah. No. Okay. Expiration date yeah. on your membership that if you do not obtain... A Hummer on a Tuesday night, mm -hmm. uh, after a certain set period of time, your membership will expire and you will have to renew. Okay. Now, now, guys, turn up the radio a little louder here. Now, Anthony. Yes. How long? <laughs> Three months. Three months? Three months? Your membership will expire after three months. <laughs> and you call yourself the Grand Poobah? Oh, my Lord. Well, I'm legislating. Hi, N.E.W. Harvey. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Once every three months. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Hey, that's... Wait, wait a second. Once every three months, they got a... Forget it. I'm not... What kind of members do you have? <laughs> Anthony... What kind... What? Hey, there's your grand poobah. Anthony decided Once every on that three one, months. Man. Forget you. You're not even a member. Well, Step aside. Let me speak to the other fellow there. Wait, wait. Let me tell you something, though. If I was yeah. the grand poobah, I would have definitely made the law that you had to get it every week. But yeah, but, yeah, but wait, wait. Let me I'm explain something. Let me, wait, 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 wait. Let me explain 
something. Anthony well, needs to grand poobah. He decided you guys only need it every three months. Anthony. No, let me let me wait, no, let me explain this to you. Now that she heard it, that now there's an expiration that, that once every three months she's gotta give it. I've been getting it like like at least three times a month. If you start telling these ladies that you they gotta re up every week, then no, I didn't say every week. Uh, you should make a minimum of twice there's a month. Grand poobah. You can't abuse there's the power grand poobah. like this. I, no, at least twice a month. You guys, once every three months. You guys vote right. me out. You guys vote me out. I would have went for every week. <laughs> what can I tell you? Get out of here. Uh, I mean, you guys are killing you can't me. can't abuse the power. You no. guys vote me out. And this <laughs> is what we get. <laughs> Anthony, three Hold on. I'm one, not done One yet. Hummer every three months. I'm what? not done. That, yo, man. We I, have that, that's levels, ridiculous. Different levels of membership. You can go for the gold and platinum membership. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. See, you, you better say that over the air. No, 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 no. So you better <laughs> you explain that to the guy. Member, uh, yeah, and, go ahead. You ha get platinum privileges. The platinum. I never heard platinum privileges. There you privileges. go. Monthly, you there are a gold go. member. There you go. The Boris Yeltsin of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. <laughs> hey, he can't. On. He can't run this damn club. And you guys <laughs> voted me out. There you have it. He's drinking vodka in the freaking corner and making up stupid rules. Excuse me. When you finally get a Hummer, you could start even talking about, about the subject. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Well, just better... remember, just remember, Opie would have went for every week. Yeah, every, every, week. Every, week. Well, every week. Well, every week. Every week. Well, at least twice a month. I you mean, you got to have. use the power. Uh, nope. Yeah, you can't. Well, I don't think a, twice a week is abusing the power. Oh, hold on. Once, twice a week. I mean, excuse me. Twice a month is abusing the power? Anthony Yeltsin, he made the root law. Twice a month is not abusing the power. There is no way in hell. I, I mean, guys must have went berserk when you said three months. Three months. Every three months. You're dead. There you go. You guys voted it's, him in. That's four okay. times a year. Look, it's not that you can't get it every week, but you will lose your membership after three months. Of course we encourage it weekly. Oh, God. Oh, now he says it. God, now God, God. Well, you playing. better change your rules. You guys going to have some angry callers. All right, man. Listen, guys, keep rocking. Congratulations again, and happy Thanksgiving. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. There you have it, guys. I, Your grand poobah, Anthony. Look, I, I suggest we start impeachment hearings right oh, now. Right uh, here and now. Come on. Right here and now. Hi, NEW. Hi. Hi, Anthony, what's up? What'd you do? <laughs> I got a call from my wife. Well, I had to convince. She loves you guys. I finally was getting some good action every week. I was getting a homer. She calls me up at work. Guess what? Anthony says I don't have to do it until every three months now to remember. What'd you do? Impeach no. Anthony. Bring back Opie. Wait, yeah. Wait a minute. The times are changing, baby. There's been a misunderstanding. And I guarantee you guys, if I get my Hummer tonight, it is all over. Not only am I taking the Grand Poobah hat back, I am kicking him out of the club. Wait, no Absolutely. way. We are hey, starting, we are starting impeachment hearings on Anthony. Hey, hold on. <laughs> you got to get, you got to say something. You got to get my wife back. I don't believe it. Change the rules. Maybe. It's finally getting good action. You guys are killing me. Maybe here. I didn't word it quite as, uh, properly. And, re and remember, uh, not, oh. not you guys are killing right, me. That's right. Anthony. Anthony. Anthony, Anthony, oh. Anthony. Oh. what are you doing? <laughs> oh, look how quickly <laughs> things turn around. <laughs> Thanks, man. Impeachment hearings start tomorrow. Wait a minute. That's for sure. Hi, N.E.W. Hey, how you guys doing? All right. Hey. Listen, he is no longer the grand poop. Hey, wait a minute. He is the grand faux pas. <laughs> All right? No, come on. The grand faux pas. My now, people, listen. my what? people, wait a minute. Listen. Listen to me. Why don't you just talk about the Potatoes Club? You know? I mean, why not? Right? You are losing your people as we speak. Drink people, more. please, we must maintain order here. Here, hold on. Yeah, Let's not, not jump to conclusions. Right? Opie like is spreading rumors and <laughs> speculation <laughs> about my words. I. Oh, no. Where's Alexander Haig when you need him? Because, oh, what is happening? Because I don't think anyone is in charge of this club anymore. <laughs> Look, I did not at any time say that it should be every three months. <laughs> Phones are going nuts. Yeah, man. it's all propaganda. Pro hey, the the listeners, you know, they they control our, our show, our club. My people, uh, <laughs> please maintain order, control, no rioting. <laughs> we will straighten this out. Obviously, it's a ploy from Opie, much like um, <laughs> the Ayatollah had the Shah thrown out. Talk all you want, man. Impeachment hearings start tomorrow.
Oh, Anthony, you blew it. I, if this was wrestling, I think this is the 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 point in the show where the uh, the good wrestler becomes the bad wrestler. No, no, no. It's like when uh, Chief J Strongbow was uh, tag team partners with Bruno Sammartino, and out of nowhere, uh, Chief J Strongbow took the brass knuckles and hit Bruno <laughs> over the head when he wasn't, you know. <laughs> Looking for it? I'm just asking my followers in the uh, Tuesday Night Hummer Club, please, maintain control. We will sort this out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Starting tonight, we are going to camp outside your residence. We are going to blast Van Halen 24 hours a day until you give up. <laughs> like, like they Van did Halen. with uh, Noriega. <laughs> Twisted sister, please. Van Halen. Don't let this propaganda get you. We will sort this out and straighten this all out, people. Please maintain order. Remember, Anthony came up with the rule, ladies. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Super Tuesday, Eric Clapton. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So be it, Anthony. Hey. I don't even feel like doing the radio show with Anthony anymore. He, he let uh, all you guys down out there. Look, if you've been following the show, we started the Tuesday Night Hummer Club. It was, it was uh, probably the, the best uh, invention known to mankind. And I, Opie, came up with it. <laughs> and then because I wasn't a member of the, my own club, Anthony decided to, um, to vote me out of my own club, pretty much. I couldn't vote you out. The people voted you out okay. because you weren't a member. And how could you lead the organization not even knowing what it's like to be a member? All right. And, and, and were... I was a member week one, so I wrestled control of the organization. Of the big Grand Poobah hat that you proudly wear on your lovely hat. Yes. Okay, and uh, you were very influential to the people, our people, the faithful listeners of our lovely radio show. We called wives, helped uh, out a lot of guys. I think I've been doing a great job as Grand Poobah of the Tuesday Night and, Hummer Club. And you officially, yeah, took over control. And then out of nowhere, about 45 minutes ago, you, you, you were talking to this lady. Were you weak? What were you thinking? <laughs> I had to sit here as just a stupid plebe and, and watch you just destroy the club I created. Wait a minute. Sure, I'm not a member and I'm not a grand poobah, but I can sit here and comment on what the hell you just did. I didn't ruin anything. This lady had a little problem with her husband. <laughs> and she needed some clarification. She said... How many times does a lady have to, do, uh, you know, do this Hummer thing on Tuesdays? And you decided that uh, the membership does expire. Right. And we've had this question in the past. I kind of just blew it to the side. Well, and, and I was hoping just, the members would figure it out for themselves. You can't just get one Hummer and then you're a member for life. There has to be. A, it helps the people if I make an expiration date because then it encourages a re-upping. And what was the expiration date again? What? 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 It's what? three months. Three months. <laughs> yeah, every three months. This is what you do to my damn club. Impeachment <laughs> here and start tomorrow, guys. No, listen to me, please. Listen to Let's me. Let's see, guys. Three months. Let's say you're not a member of the club and you're going to become a member tonight. Okay. Boom, you get your little Hummer. Okay. Now the lady, according to Anthony, doesn't have to do it again until, hmm, January, February, March 1st. No. If you March 1st. Weekly, then there'll be problems. Uh, How about once a month? How about once, th twice a month? Guys, just remember, Opie speaking, I would have uh, voted that uh, you had to renew your membership every week. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Hey, man, am I on the radio? Yeah. You know, you really caused a problem with this three months. Uh, it wasn't me. My God. Don't get us confused. It was I, Anthony. You, you guys were my heroes. You got me out of a slump like you never believed. <laughs> now you blurt this <laughs> shit out on the radio? <laughs> Are you fucking crazy? Oh, excuse me. Look, please, please uh, maintain control. We, I don't we, understand. We will sort See, I this thought out. you guys were men. You were, we were sticking together on this issue. It was great. You blew it. Just remember, it was Different. Anthony and not Opie. Oh, Just remember man. that. It is key to this whole thing. Anthony man. came up with the rule that uh, ladies only have to give homers every three months. I didn't say that. Oh, no. Now, get, Anthony. I just said you were losing How membership. How dare you? Oh, now, if we could throw, uh, overthrow Anthony's leadership, I do believe I could uh, restore Anthony, order yeah. in our lovely club. Anthony, amongst, amongst friends, if anybody does something like that, he gets banned. You're not look, one of the guys anymore. Look, I'm legislating. You I'm have to to the other side. I have the hat. You've got, you better sh your head. Cut it out. 
You will respect my daughter. I, I think Anthony's a homo. <laughs> hey, I didn't oh. Hey, you guys have a great show. Thanks, man. And you, you make my night. Oh, uh, cool. It's a good ride home with you guys. Hey, thanks, man. We got to fly, but thanks. Keep up the good work. All right. Take it easy. Bye. Goodbye. Hi, N.E.W., do you uh, got any words for the uh, the lovely Grand Poobah, Anthony? Anthony? Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, that sounds pretty good on the radio. I listen. I, I want to go to. I want to say something for Opie. Yeah. You're being this de dethroned and everything. I was dethroned. Nobody gives you enough credit. I was dethroned. I mean, we we we. I think you and myself and a lot of other people we think along the same wavelengths. I don't know where Anthony's head is. <laughs> now you may have been kicked out of the club due to a little. Technicality? Technicality. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> no, listen, you're gay. That's real. Oh, you're, you're breaking up like real audio. Great. It oh, <laughs> sounds sorry. like real audio. You sound like real audio on the computer. But That's terrible. I, guess, I, I would assume That's that... That's phone. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that you are as ticked off at Anthony as, as every other faithful I, listener out there. I, All right. Yeah, right. I, uh, I would like to see you back as Grand Poobah. Oh, fuck. I think I think. Uh... Don't make any snap judgments, people. I will be making a statement tomorrow at three <laughs> fifteen. What can you possibly as come up? I with? will be making an emergency statement <laughs> as Grand Poobah of the Tuesday Night Hummer Club because I think things have to be cleared up. I think we should have a cage match. I think. <laughs> I think you, Opie, are trying using this against me. I think it's a uh, partisan thing. I think I heard what I heard. I don't see any grounds for impeachment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. We'll see you tomorrow at three fifteen. Yes, you I are, will. You are done. Explain you what I done. said. If I get my Hummer tonight. Not only do I become Grand Poobah again, you are out of the club. <laughs> out. Out in Z. We take your stripes. Oh. AWOL. Look, I don't care what you say might happen, would happen, going to happen. I am Poobah. You are not even in the club. Fine. Uh, we could just completely just uh, have a coup d'etat and screw all the, the laws of the land. Look, <laughs> the members will speak. Yeah, they will. After speak. I make my statement tomorrow.